Okay, hello everyone. All right, so the next program in chapter six is actually this is the last program in chapter six. Okay, so golf scores. The Spring Fork Amateur Golf Club has a tournament every weekend. The club president has asked you to write two programs. A program that will read each player's name and golf score as keyboard input, and then save these records in a file named golf.txt. Each record will have a field for players for the player's name and a field for the player score. The second, the second program is going to be a program that reads the records from the golf.txt file and displays them. All right, so we are basically going to save um, a player's information, which is the player's name and the player's golf score. Okay, both, you know, you know, both fields, okay, the two pieces of, of information make up a record. We are going to store that in a text file okay or one after the other so we take this player we start store, store the information we take another player we store the information and so on and so forth and then we're going to write a program to read from the file and display to us uh, the information about each player their name and then the score All right so let's focus we're going to write two programs for this um, question so let's focus on the first one it's going to be a program that will read each uh, player's name and golf score as keyboard input and then save these as records in the file name golf.txt all right, so we know we are going to create a file named golf.txt and then allow the user to type in, um, um, allow the uh, basically write the program in such a way that it's going to ask the user to type in the player's name and the player score. All right, so let's break it down into a couple of functions. And so let's, the first thing I want us to do is let's go ahead and create the main function, right? So let's define a main function. Now, the main function um, in most programming languages is the function that calls every other function it's the starting point of every program right so i'm going to define the main function and the first thing i want us to do is let's go ahead and open okay a file uh, in write mode okay so let's go ahead and open a file and we're going to open a file it said we should create a file called golf.txt so we're going to open a file well the open function basically takes couple of arguments. It takes in the name of the file you want to open and what mode you want to open that file in. So we want to open golf.txt. Make sure you add the extension. And then the next argument is going to be what mode we want to open this file in. Now because we are going to write to this file, we want to open this file in write mode. And I'm going to pass in the letter W in double quotations as a second argument, okay, that's going to be the mode I'm going to open this golf.txt file in. All right, so when I use this open function, or when I call this open function and, and I pass in these two arguments, it's going to create a file object in memory, okay? Now I'm going to refer that file, I'm going to reference that file object, okay, with a variable. So this is going to create a file object in memory, and I'm going to use a variable, I'm going to call it golf file. And then I'm going to assign it to this. So basically, the file object that was created as a result of us calling this open function is going to be assigned to this golf file variable. So this golf file variable will refer to that file object that was created okay, when we call the open function. All right, so now we have the file over here. The next thing we should do is let's go ahead and ask the user to type in their name. Right? We can actually make a whole function out of that. So let's go ahead and define another function. Um, I'm going to call it get player um, name. Get player name is not going to accept in any argument because all we wanted to do is, oops, yeah, all we wanted to do is ask the user to type in um, their name and then we're going to use this function, the function to return the information, the name back, okay, back. So I'm going to call the input function, and the input function is used to basically prompt a user to type in something. And so I'm going to take in an argument. The argument you pass into the input function is what you want to display to the user as a prompt or as a question. I'm going to display to the user, please type in the player name. Oh, okay, please type in the player name, something like that. And so the input function is going to display this to the user, and it's going to allow the user to type in something. Okay, now whatever the user types is going to be returned back to us. It's going to be sent back to us as a string. And so when that happens, 
when this input function is returning whatever it is as type back to us as a string, we need a place to store it. So I'm going to cre create a variable over here, and I'm going to call it player name, and I'm going to set it equal to whatever the user typed over here. Okay, that was sent back by the input function. When I have that value in player in player name in the variable player name, I'm going to go ahead and return it. Let's return player name because if we call this function in main, we will need that value. So let's return player name. Let's do the same thing for player score. We can copy this or we can just type it. Let's just type it. So I'm going to define another function and I'm going to call it get player score. This is a function that's going to allow us to get the player score. So with this function, it's going to be the same idea. We're going to call the input function and we are going to ask the, ask the player to type in the, the score, okay? Or ask the user to type in the score of the player. So please type in well, you know, one cool thing we can do is um, we are going to call the, the get player name function and we are going to get the, the player's name. We can pass it in here in this get player score as an argument and use it in this prompt, right? So before we continue with the input function, let's go ahead and define this function, this get player score function, in such a way that it needs the player's name. The program didn't ask us to do that, but it makes it look nice if we use it in the, in the prompt. So I'm going to define it in such a way that it's going to require a name, and I'm going to call it player name. It's going to require um, a, an argument. I'm going to define a parameter over here. And then we can use it in this input function and say that, um, please, yeah, okay, please type in the score of, and then we can concatenate it to whatever was passed in for player name. So it's, if, the, if the player name is, let's say, Kakra, it's going to read as, please type in the score of Kakra, right? So please type in the score of player name, something like this. Anytime we call get player score, we will need this get player name um, um, argument. We need it passed in, into it. All right, so once um, this is displayed to the user, the user is going to, it's going to allow, it's going to pop up some kind of text box, the input function. It's going to pop up some kind of text box and allow the user to type in a value. Now, whatever the user types is going to be um, returned. It's going to be sent back to us as a string, right? But the thing is, um, we cannot, you know, uh, okay, well, what did I do over here? Let's see. Um, get player name, get player score. All right, so we're fine. I, I thought I messed up something here. All right, so whatever the user types, okay, is going to be returned to us as a string. We are asking the user to type in the score. So most likely the user is going to type in a number, right? Let's say the user types in a number. That number is going to be returned to us as a string. Oopsie. I need to change this. Just one second, guys. I'm sorry. Let's go to system preferences. I think there are some, um, there are some settings on this. Just one second. Schedule. And let's just do that. Okay. Sorry about that. Okay. So whatever is going to be returned, okay, from the input function is, is returned as a string by default. We're asking the user to type in a number. Even if the user types in a number over here, that number is going to be returned as a string. But we cannot we cannot use um, we cannot use uh, um, let's say a string f in calculations, for example, for math calculations and all that. So if we if we need that score for let's say math operations, we we have to make sure we are going to um, we we have to make sure we convert it to an integer, or or a float. You know, if, depending on what we want to do with it. In this case, we can leave it as a string for now because we don't we're not going to do any math operations with it. But I just want you to know that if you want to use that score as, um, uh, or for for calculations, you need to convert it to a number. All right. So whatever is going to return from the input function, I want to store it in a variable. I'm going to call it player score, right? So player score is going to hold whatever is going to return from this, this input function when the player types in the score. When we, when we have the player score, let's go ahead and return that as well. So return player score. All right. So in main, when we open the, the gov.txt file, we've opened it in write mode. It's ready to be written to. Let's go ahead and get the player name. We we define a function for it. So let's get the player name. Right now we know that get player name returns the player name. First of all, it's going to ask you to type in the player name, and it's going to return the play, um, the player name. So once it's returning the player name, we need a place to store it. I'm going to go ahead and create a variable 
in main and I'm going to call it player name to store whatever is being returned from the get player name function. Now it doesn't matter if this player name variable is the same as this player name variable. They are in two different functions and so they are different. This player name variable, the scope of this player name variable is within this get player name function and the scope of this player name variable is within this main function. So they are you know they are like twins but they are, they are different, okay? They are, they are in two different locations. So this player name is you know only works here. The territory of this player name, the scope is, is only um, seen here, right? It's only ac accessed here, something like that. I hope you get it. All right, so we'll have player name stored here in this variable. Let's use the same idea to get the player score, right? So let's call get player score. Now remember, get player score, we, def we designed it in such a way that it needs the player name because we want to display it in that prompt, in the prompt of uh, you know, basically this prompt here. Okay, please type in the score of the player name. We have the player name here, so we can pass it into this get player score function, right? And when we call the get player score and we pass in the player the player name, it's going to return to us the player score. And so when it's returning to us the player the player score, we need a place to store that too. So I'm going to create a variable, another variable here, and call it player score, and then store whatever is being returned from the get player score function in player score. Again, it doesn't matter if this player score variable is the same as this player score variable. The scope of this player score variable is within this get player score function, and the scope of this player score variable is within the main function here. All right, so now we have the player name and the player score. We are ready to write it to the file. So the way we write it to the file is, um, let's see. We, we want to allow, because we don't know how many um, players, okay, um, let's say a user is going to type into a file. It could be 10 players, it could be 2 players. So we need some kind of mechanism to allow the user to keep typing until they want to stop, right? So I'm going to create a variable, and I'm going to call it another entry, another um, entry. And then I'm going to set it equal to the character y, okay, uh, the lowercase y, let's see, um, yeah, I'm going to set it to the character lowercase y, all right, and then I'm going to create a while loop, okay, and the only time the while loop is going to run is while another entry, the variable that, the variable that I just created is equal to the character y, right, I'm saying that while this variable contains the character y, I'm using double, the double equal sign to, uh, to compare, to ask if what's on the right is equal to what's on the left. If I use one equal sign, I'm assigning what's, if I use one equal sign like this, I'm assigning what's on the right to what's on the left. But if I'm using double equal sign, I'm comparing them and I'm asking is what's on the right equal to what's on the left. So I'm saying while another entry is equal to or is, is, is the same as the lowercase y, I'm even going to say or the uppercase y. Okay. Let's see. I may I may have to I may have to um do this twice. I'm not sure if this is correct. Uh, it looks a bit it looks a bit odd to me, but then we'll see. We'll test it and see. So okay, so basically what I'm trying to say is let, let's 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 delete this for now. It looks odd to me. Let's just test it with lowercase y, and I'll come to lowercase uppercase y in a second. So I'm saying while another entry is equal to y, and we know another entry is equal to y, so we know our while loop is going to run for the first time at least. Why is it equal to y? Let's while another entry is equal to y. Let's go ahead and write these two, okay, the, the piece of information into. Um, let's see. Um, all right, so while it's equal to y, let's go ahead and actually now get the, 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 the two pieces of information, right? In the loop, let's go ahead and get the two pieces of information, right? So the very first time the loop runs, another entry is going to set, is going to be y. And then while another entry is y, we'll, we'll evaluate to true. And if it's true, then let's get the player's name. Let's get the player's score. And then let's write it to the file. 
So we know the name of the, the, the variable that's referenced in the file is golf file. So we're going to say golf file dot write using this method dot write. And we are writing to the file, first of all, the player name. Okay, we know the player name is a string. And when we write to a file, we want to concatenate with a new line character, backslash n. So the new line character will basically allow whatever follows the player name to be displayed on the next line. Other than that, if we add anything, okay, if we try to write anything to the file again uh, to follow player name, it's going to be joined right next to it in the file. Okay, so let's go ahead and write the player name and concatenate a new line character. And the new line character backslash n, this is a called an escape sequence, right? So backslash n, okay, together it's, it's a new line character, it's an escape sequence, and it basic, basically causes um, the position anytime you once it once it prints this or it writes this to the file It's going to move the position from the end of that line to the beginning of that line So anytime we write something to the file again It continues from the next line going and it doesn't continue from the end of this line. I hope that makes sense So we write the player name we concatenate a new line character and then we write the player score And once we write a player score, we also concatenate with a new line character, backslash n, so that whatever follows the score is going to continue from the next line going, okay, and not right um, attached to the player score. It's going, because of the new line character, it's going to force that once it prints the player score or, or, or writes the player score, it's going to move the position from the end of that line, okay, of the, from the end of the line of the player score to the next line. So anything that comes after the player score will be displayed from that line from that next line going. Now, player score, like I said, um, in this case, we know that it's a, it's a string because in the player score, in the get player score function, we just return, okay, th in this input function returns a string. And this return statement returns that player score string. Whatever the user type, even if it's a number, it's going to return us a string. It's not a problem uh, because all we want to do is we want to, before, before you can print anything into the file, you need to make sure it's a string in the first place. So if it's a string, it's fine, okay? When you're trying to read from it um, and we want to use it for math operations, we need to make sure we convert it to an integer. But if it's a string and you're writing it to the file, that's fine because you need to make sure it's a string. All right, so we write this, you know, the, the, this piece of information into the file. And then when we are done, we want to make sure um, uh, and, and ask want to want to find out from the user if they want to type in another another entry. So we ask them um, again. We say we ask them with the input function. I mean, in, in the while loop, once once we get the first, uh, we get the player name, we get the score, we write it to the file. We ask them again. Do you have another piece of information, or do you have another player's inf um, information to add to the file? So, do you want to add another record? something like that. 